get that out of here. All right, we ain't got time for that. Hey guys, welcome back to the shop. It's been a while since I've worked on the Mustang. Uh, it's the end of the summer season, and uh, kind of along with that is one of those traits of ADHD where I've actually lost interest in making progress on the car for now. It's really my only project still. I'm, I'm trying not to add more projects to my list, but uh, it's so easy to get distracted when you lose focus on what you're currently working on. So we'll be back on that shortly. That's the whole idea of this channel, honestly, but not the only thing that we talk about on this channel. So today we're just going to take a look at a few interesting things around the workshop here. We're going to talk about the space that's next to this, the shed, what I want to do with that in the future. We're going to talk about a project I worked on a long time ago and never quite fully finished. It's usable, but it's not actually finished. And I have a question for those of you who have a well on your property and deal with sand. So, let's go walk outside a minute. So this shed that's full of random stuff is 14 by 30, 32, whatever the width of the shop is. And this is going to be where all the metalworking tools will go. As soon as I finish closing in that wall, and building a wall in the front here with a big door. I want to be able to park the lawnmower in here. So I do want to keep the lawnmower and the weed whacker and fuel and stuff separate from the metalworking section. So right about where the end of that plywood is, I'm going to put an internal wall with a door through it. And then this section will be where I park the mower and the part put the generator and stuff and we'll have a, a door, a big wide door here that we can lock. Uh, and then the rest of this we'll finish uh, replacing the roof at some point and insulating. I got half of it done. Not exactly sure when I'm going to get to the other half. But that's what's going to happen out here. This is going to be an excellent space for everything dirty. Grinding, welding heavy stuff, uh, you know, metal forming. Maybe even some blacksmithing in the future. I would love to do some blacksmithing. This utility trailer is full of crap, but this is an air ride trailer. And I'll see if I can dig up some old footage, but this has the airbags in this section right here. And there's a compressor and a tank in there with valves. This is independent suspension and it will raise up so the deck is about 18 inches off the ground the top of the deck and it will sit all the way down on the ground right now it's on a block but this tail will touch the ground and it's only a two inch bump and then a fairly shallow ramp angle and then the flat deck i've seen a lot of these trailers are being made now with the air ride where they drop all the way to the ground I would just like to say that I did it first <laughs> back in 2004, 2005, 2006, something like that. So this I will get, we got to, we got to get rid of all the junk that's on there and use up that heavy, uh, square tubing, but we're going to clean this up and we're going to talk about it in future and maybe talk about some plans for it because it's barely been used, honestly. Every time I wanted to use it, I didn't have a truck. And now when I have a truck that I can tow it with, I don't have a need for it at the moment. It's kind of frustrating. That was a, a big project for me to do, and it took forever for me to get it to this point. It's drivable, not drivable, it's towable. You can use it. Uh, I do have to put D-rings on the sides for strapping down a load, but it's ready to go. And I think it's about a 8,000 pound uh, payload rating. So 
I never did weigh it on scales after I finished it. It's heavy. This front end is really heavy. I would like to make that lighter. Anyway, that's for the future. Hello, chickens. Okay, so this is our shallow well pump. We got the uh, the two tube two pipes going down in the, into the ground about 40 feet, and this is our pressure line coming out, down, tees into the tank, and then out to the house and everything else. The problem here is we get a little bit of sand, not much, but a little bit of sand. Like if you go look in the uh, toilet tank. The clean water tank, there's a little bit of grit in the bottom. And our washing machine has the little screen on the cold water inlet, and you get a little bit of sand built up on there, and then it, it complains because it doesn't fill fast enough. So, I wanna remove the sand. I just hate filters and maintenance. So my idea is this. Right here, in this section, I wanna bring this out and tee it, well not tee it, but run it into a four or five inch diameter section of pipe that's going to be mounted here, right? The pipe will have a cap on the bottom, so it'll have an inlet in the top of the cap. It'll have a little bit of pipe inside there, like uh, this is one inch, so in, one inch diameter down a few inches, and then, you know, four inch, five inch, maybe even six inch pipe capped on the bottom, and then it will have an outlet up here and come down and tee in. It's the flow that would happen here is not ideal, but the thought is that the water would come in. Maybe I'll put up an illustration about this. The water will come in, come down that little short stretch of pipe inside the big pipe, and the water will, you know, flow out and slow way down because that diameter is so much bigger than this one inch pipe that the water is going to slow down quite a bit and then turn around it'll come back up to go out the other pipe and into the rest of the system and i'm hoping that as the water slows down and it comes down towards the bottom and turns the sand will fall out the bottom so then i have the sand trapped at the bottom one other thing i will have to have is a valve down at the bottom somewhere that you can open it and it flushes water out. The idea is to give the water an area to slow down quite a bit and let the sand fall out of the flow. The water turns around, goes back up. The sand falls to the bottom. Every couple of months or so, come out, open that valve and flush the sand out of the bottom, out into the yard, and we shouldn't get any more sand in the house. I think this will work. The question is, can I get a big enough diameter large enough volume for that water to flow into that it'll work well. Uh, I do think that we're a little lucky here because my neighbor just a few hundred feet through the trees over there, he gets enough sand that he's changing his filters every month. He has multiple filters. He changes them every month and they're full. He even complains that when he fills his koi pond, he gets this layer of sand in the bottom. That's a little extreme. We don't get near that much. So I'm hoping if we just knock most of it out, we won't have a problem in the future with sand filling up our plumbing in our house. Cause I've heard of that happening before. Sand filling up plumbing where it slows, stops, settles, builds up over time. Go one day and you're not getting water out of the tap. What the heck? Well, pipes are full of sand. I don't want that to happen. So even though it's been, uh, I haven't been working on the car a lot lately, I haven't been idle. We got plenty of stuff going on. Uh, one of them was, someone tried to open that shop door, that rolling door. They tried to pry it open. So I beefed up all the bracketry around that door. You can't open it now. You're gonna have to rip it off the wall. And that's gonna make a heck of a racket. And really there's windows and other doors and stuff. So. That's not the weak point anymore. We also put up security cameras. Not what I wanted to spend money on, but we kind of felt the need to do that. We live out here a ways in the country 
and uh, yeah, pretty, not isolated, but everybody's spread out up here. You don't have someone right next door watching your house. So uh, the other exciting thing, wow, whoops. The other exciting thing that we've had up here, we had a cougar go through the neighbor's yard yesterday at like 10 a.m. Can you believe that? Broad daylight. And it's a full-grown adult. Not the first cougar encounter we've had up here. We had one right off our back porch. Cougars are a big enough problem in this area that uh, there were cats that have gone missing. Dogs that were, oh, I don't know if they were directly attacked, but raised quite a ruckus. There was a bunch of sheep that got killed about a month ago. And right next to someone's house, you know, their their own sheep. Um, we live on the edge of the wilderness up here, and it's to be expected. It's the way it is. Doesn't feel like it's, you know, doesn't mean it's ideal. And uh, I don't have a problem with wolves, cougars, whatnot. They can, yeah, they're they're in the hills. That's fine. Just not my yard. Thanks for stopping by. In the near future, we'll be back on the car. Don't worry. I think what I need to do next is get all that little stuff welded up in the back of the car, clean it up, paint it, and move to the front because the front needs cross member. It needs control arms. And we have to figure out how we're gonna mount the engine in the front. Sounds like fun. That's actually sounds like real fun, figuring it out. This little small fabrication stuff where you're filling holes and little patch panels that gets old real quick but figuring out where the engine's going to sit and how much room we have for a transmission and radiator and all that stuff that sounds like fun all right thanks we'll see you next time